Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girlfriend and we'll go back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below, and we'll be more than glad to do it for you. Uh, so today we're going to be reacting to searching my soul searching my soul led me to islam Chris, christine what christine winters so without wasting time let's get into the video Assalamualaikum, peace be with you all. My name is Kristen and I wanted to share my journey to Islam. Um, like many of us, I went through a period of soul searching um, where I was trying to find, you know, the deeper meaning in life, where I belong, and um, what God really was. And I think I actually spent quite a lot of my life soul searching and it started when I was a young child. I was raised Roman Catholic and I come from um, a very spiritual family although we weren't always uh, practicing religiously. I did attend church um, when I was younger and I completed all the religious uh, rituals and rites of passage. So for example I was baptized and I, I had my communion and my confirmation. Um, but I think I always struggled um, praying to Jesus. And I remember even as a young child when we would have the hymns and the prayers in church, I would always um, pause when I had to say Jesus um, and I would replace uh, the name Jesus with God. So that was quite telling at the time, although I didn't look into things further until later in my life. I would say when I was in my last years of high school um, and starting university, I then took a very academic approach to religion. So I, um, I remember buying a book on all the uh, world religions. It was like an encyclopedia. All the world's major religions. It didn't include every single religion, but the major religions of the world. And I read that cover to cover and I took notes, um, I guess trying to shop around, so to speak, for the religion that spoke to me the most. And I ended up reading the entire Bible. Um, and later on, I think a few years later, I read the entire Quran or the translation of the Quran. And um, at university, I actually um, met uh, Muslims. And so that uh, touched me on a more personal level, I think. And I remember when I was living in New York City... In my 20s, I approached a local mosque and I asked if I could attend uh, one of their Quran classes. Even though I wasn't Muslim at the time, I just I wanted to learn more. And um, throughout my, I guess, early 20s, I traveled quite a bit of the world. I, you know, learned about different cultures and religions in that way, and spoke to people and. Um, and I took courses on Judaism and Islam in university. Um, and I just, I read a lot of books and I was just trying to find myself and, um, understand God and, you know, the meaning of life, so to speak. And I think, um, one of the, one of the turning points in my life, uh, and I may not be going in order here, but was when I was recruited as a social worker to work in Luton, uh, England. And I remember thinking, oh, this is like the land of Muslims. Um, and that was when I really made some deep uh, friendships with Muslims who were very practicing, very knowledgeable, 
And I just remember that they had a sense of peace about them and happiness. And I just, I wanted that so desperately. I mean, I had a good life and I didn't have any major problems, but I just, I wanted that sense of peace that they had. And, um, I also remember just backtracking a little bit before Luton, I had traveled to, uh, Turkey again in my twenties. And I remember going to one of the mosques, I believe it was the blue mosque there. And just feeling that sense of peace again in that mosque. Um, and again, I wasn't Muslim at the time. And, uh, I, I just, I loved that. And I, I went back to that mosque quite a few times, but again, I didn't convert at that point in time. And so, um, fast forwarding to Luton, I, um, I was, I think at the point of, uh, accepting Islam, but one thing that held me back was that I, I believed at the time that Islam, you know, was very strict in terms of, you know, non-Muslims basically going to hell. Uh, you know, that was my understanding of what the religion said. And I, I said to myself, well, I can't accept a religion that's basically saying that my entire family is going to hell. Um, so that was a, a big struggle for me. And I remember speaking to an imam about it and he said, look, you know, Allah will judge each individual based on their beliefs and their actions throughout their lives. And Allah is most merciful. He loves us more than, you know, our own mothers do. So with that in mind, you know, it's not up for to human beings to judge who's going to heaven and hell. That's Allah's decision and Allah's alone. And um, remember that Allah is fair and just and merciful. And so that really helped me to overcome that barrier um, in converting. And I... I converted then, uh, it was December, 2007. I took my Shahada or my Testament of faith that there's only one God and that Muhammad peace be upon him is, uh, the prophet and messenger of, of God. And, um, I remember people at the time with good intentions telling me I had to change my name. My name is Kristen. And I said, well, no, I can't do that. My name is my identity. And, um, I decided to keep my name and what I've learned later on is that you don't have to change your name as long as it's not a, a name with a bad meaning. And Christian means believer in, in Christ and Jesus. And as Muslims, we do believe in Jesus, not Jesus as God, but Jesus as a prophet. And we have a lot of respect and love for him. So, um, and that brings me to one of the points that, you know, you can't judge Islam or any religion by the people who practice. We as human beings have limited knowledge and we have good intentions, but sometimes people will give you incorrect information and it's your responsibility to uh, look into, you know, what they're saying and to verify uh, with, you know, scholars and other knowledgeable um, sources. So that's one thing. And another thing that struck me or strikes me is that, you know, obviously, especially now, there's a lot of uh, bad press about Islam. And, you know, I think back to, you know, September 11th, 2001, the terrorist attacks. And, you know, there's been several since then, unfortunately. And interestingly, quite a few people actually embraced and accepted Islam after the, those attacks because they... Um, looked into the religion more and they realized that these attacks and these people committing these atrocities are not uh, practicing the religion of Islam, that Islam is a very peaceful, loving uh, religion. And um, so, so I guess that's one of my points is that we should never judge a religion by the people who practice it because none of us are perfect. And, and some of us, unfortunately, um, grossly misinterpret the message of Islam uh, to the point where it's not the message of Islam it's not in relation to terrorism, um, for example. So um, 
I guess that's mainly my story. And, um, you know, my family have been very supportive. I, uh, am trying to convert them, <laughs> but, uh, and you know, I am not a perfect myself. I'm still a work in progress. Um, I, I'm not consistent in wearing the hijab. I wear it at times, but it is something that ultimately I would like to do. The hijab is the head covering. And, um, yeah, I just, I, I think the Quran is, um, a beautiful book of guidance for all of us. And if you really, you know, give it a chance, you'll notice that it has some remarkable, um, you know, messages in it. And just before I end, um, two things that I really, I really remember when I first read the, the translation of the Quran was that it talked about, you know, how, uh, the fetus forms in a mother's womb. And it talks about how the moon controls the tides and very specific scientific things that, you know, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, couldn't have known back then uh, when the Quran was revealed. And there's many other things in the Quran that really touch your heart. And um, another remarkable thing is that it has remained unchanged uh, for, you know, many, many years since it was revealed. Whereas other books of guidance, um, unfortunately, have changed and there's many different versions of them. So that also gives me... Um, kind of reassurance. Um, and then lastly, and again, this isn't an exhaustive, uh, story of my life, <laughs> which I can't do in 10 minutes or whatever, but I've been through some very difficult times lately. Uh, you know, I lost some very close people, um, who died in the last few months and Islam has, given me that sense of peace and that trust in, in Allah's greater plan. And without that, I would not have been able to survive these difficult times. So thank you all. And I'm available to answer anyone's questions. Um, should you want to reach me? Assalamu I'm happy that she saw the peace in this um, religion and she said she reverted in 2007 and this is 2021. Um, I don't know when this was put out there but um, this is to show that you have to take your time even if you've decided to take part of a, um, a certain religion or anything. You have to take your time because she mentioned that she, she wears the hijab once in a while which is fine as well she's taking her time to fully understand everything and i'm sure by the time maybe this year will be ending or maybe she's even covering her entire head by now which is very very amazing i love such um stories really really love such videos let me know what you guys think make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video